What is going on YouTube? Ryan up at 816 Diesel. Today, I'm going to show you guys how to install a low pressure oil pump. Uh, this truck came in, we bought it, has a uh, 1211 code, which uh, low high ICP, only get it at wide open throttle. So, you know, we tested the oil pump, we tested the injectors, we went through everything, high pressure system, fuel system. Uh, everything's kind of leading towards this. So basically, here's what you want to do. Um, you're going to start out, pop your hood, obviously. Take your degas uh, cap off. Degas is sitting over there. You're going to go under the truck. Right there is your petcock. That's a 19 millimeter. If the head's broken off, there's an Allen key as a backup. Uh, this one clearly has a broken trans line. Uh, it was just seized, so we'll be replacing that, but you're going to do that. I usually run a uh, rubber line out from here down to the cooling, down to the pan. There's some training fluid in there and extra shit, but uh, you're going to drain that completely out. Then uh, you're going to disconnect. You got two training lines coming in here. Okay, so one's there. Obviously, that'll be replaced. One's over there. Um, 16 millimeter is what should fit. Uh, on the nut here so you just want to make sure get a separate catch pan don't mix your fluids um, we're gonna be replacing all the engine cooling in this anyways just cause it's a higher mileage truck um, you want to drain everything out you know this they'll they'll leak quite a bit I mean that's a good amount of fluid um, you want to make sure that if you're gonna reuse the fluid uh, I don't recommend it but if you are make sure you clean the pan we'll be adding new transmission fluid in um, you can see these little dowels here on the shroud, okay? So those are what keep it in on the lower. You want to make sure you don't break those or damage them. I've already done a little bit of work here uh, and then decided to make a video, so I'm just kind of giving you a recap. Now, when you start, once the coolant's drained, you get your two mounts up here, okay? This is the passenger side. That's the driver's side. Um... They're going to hold the radiator back. You're going to have to pop these trim clips up. Be careful because these shrouds are getting old. You know, these are 20-year-old trucks. Um, fold it back. Just use the trim tool, whatever you got. Uh, you'll have two bolts here. One bolt over here. That's what holds these on. For the degas, you're going to have two bolts down here. And you're going to have one extra bolt. Um, it's actually on that bracket, another 8 millimeter. You have a line here. And a line here those are your flow in return so once you get those out um, you can pull the radiator as long as those dowels are out there's two methods here um, you can loosen the fan first and then pull the shroud uh, or you can do it the way I'm doing it really doesn't matter uh, whatever your preference is as long as you don't damage anything so I'm gonna pull the radiator out uh, then I'm gonna pull the fan shroud off and then I will loosen the fan with an impact um, I have a fan clutch tool that we put on there to get that loose so um, I'm gonna start there get everything out and then I will show you guys what the next step is now one thing I did forget to mention before you <laughs> obviously get started is uh, loosening these your degas hose return and your lower radiator hose. Obviously take those off before you pull the fan. Uh, you wanna make sure that when you're about to slide it up, you have enough clearance and tolerance here. So just kinda of slide that back out of the way. Then you got a full shot of taking this up. Um, you know, I usually let these drain. I kinda of do these jobs at the end of the day. Let the trans lines drain overnight and uh, let the coolant drain overnight so everything's just out. And you got a clear radiator. Um, but yeah, so obviously take your lower, uh, hoses off and the upper you remove, um, after you drain the coolant, you know, it can kind of just sit up here. Um, it's not really going to hurt anything or damage anything. So we're going to pull this now and then I'll show you what to do next. Okay. So we pulled that out and you kind of see a little better what I was talking about. Um, you don't have to remove the radiator to the low pressure pump, but it gives you a lot more room to work. Um, plus, 
kind of gives you an idea of the condition of your radiator. You know, this one's got debris on it, so we're going to blow all that out, clear it all out, clean it before we reinstall it. Here's your shroud. Give you a little condition there. Um, so if you don't have an impact, or sorry, a uh, air hammer, you can do this with a wrench. If you're going to do it that way, um, here's what I recommend. Either take the battery out completely on the passenger side, or lay something over it, big heavy towel, cloth, something major, because this is a power connection. So if you got a wrench on there and you're hitting it with a dead blow, um, it's going to come over and hit this. The last thing you need to do is arc, damage the PCM, anything like that. Um, you should have your batteries disconnected anyways, but just in the chance, you know, I've had to do that before when I didn't have an air wrench and, or an air hammer. And, and I can tell you, it's, it's better to just either have the tool or be very cautious when doing it. So we'll go ahead and get that off. Uh, then we'll remove the belt and we'll get down to the pulley and I'll show you what you're working with. All right, so compressors right, I'm gonna give you an idea. Um, I just use an air hammer, give it a little quick hit. This will spin right off, nice and easy. Like I said, you can use a wrench, uh, but if you're gonna hit it, again, make sure you disconnect your battery. Um, that way you don't run into any complications. And also, make sure you keep a hand on this when you're spinning it off. Uh, that way you don't drop it down, damage the intercooler, AC condenser. Um, you really wanna just take your time with it. You know, make sure you have two hands on it. Don't let it fall, don't let it get damaged, cracked. You know, these fans, they're plastic, but they do a lot of work. So uh, I'm gonna get this off, I'll show you how to remove the belt, and then we'll get down to the pulley. Okay, so now your fan's off. You kinda see what we're working with here. Uh, this is the belt tensioner. So I'm gonna use a three quarter drive. Get it in there, use a breaker bar. You're gonna relieve the tension by pushing towards the passenger side, as you can see. I always slip it off right here. Um, that just makes it super easy. So I'll go ahead and do that now. So, we got that loose. Go ahead and get your belt off. Um, there's a routing diagram right over here. If you still have that on your truck, uh, if not, feel free to screenshot this, pause it here, do whatever. That just shows you how to route it on the truck. Okay, make sure you set this off to the side. Now, we're gonna get down. That has a bolt on it, so how this is gonna work, let me get some light down here. Okay, so you got a 24 millimeter bolt. Um, the reason why I like having the radiator out is it gives you a lot enough room to get an impact in. You're going to need a pulley puller, harmonic balancer puller. Um, it'll thread into these three holes. You know, it looks like a T almost. You'll see the setup I use. Uh, so go ahead and get your impact down, block out or get that 24 millimeter off. Um, the pump actually sits back behind here and you can kind of see the case right there uh, but we want to get this off first get the puller um, remove the pulley and then we really want to clean this whole area up because you don't want any debris anything falling in you don't want anything like that this little pressure system runs on a mechanical setup so you know you can get something in there and just smoke the pump so uh, our goal right now, we'll get that off. I'll show you how we do it, and we'll go from there. Okay, so as you can see, got the 24. Now this is a deep well. Uh, I don't have a short at the moment. It's getting used on another shock, but you can see the clearance we have, so just pay attention, be careful. You know, put your impact on. Loosen it up real quick. You don't need much. Take that off, be gentle about it. Now our bolt's loose. Now there is a washer, make sure it comes out with it, okay? Now you can kind of see what we're 
working with here. Let me get the camera flipped. So you can kind of see what's going on in there. Uh, somebody's been in here before at some point. There's some RTV. I'll uh, probably keep the key in. So I'll have to figure that out. But now we're going to get the, uh, you know, I'm going to clean all this out, get all the debris out of there, and then uh, we'll get the keyway clear. So we can go ahead and put the balancer on um, or the puller on and I'll show you what the setup looks like. Okay, so the kit I use looks like this. Um, you wanna make sure, check, get your bolt size right, get your fitment right. Um, you're gonna put these through. Now again, I always recommend using everything. As you can tell, we use this thing quite a bit. You know, make sure you put your washers on, get this set up the right way. Um, Obviously, that's backwards, so hold on. But you want to make sure you get the right fitment, the right bolts. Um, make sure you grab the right washer size. So, we'll get this set up. Um, on the end, this is critical, okay? You want to make sure that you have a piece that isn't too wide. Because um, this is going to go in there. So, that's threaded inside of that crank pulley. And you want to make sure that this piece uh, isn't too big and isn't going to catch on the threads. The last thing you want to do is damage those threads on the crank pulley because you're going to have a really bad time. I promise you if you do. Um, you get a couple different options. Obviously, some of these are too big. Um, I've seen guys go too blunt on it. So you really want to make sure you have the right setup. So I'll get this all uh, put on and show you where we go from there. Okay, so now you can see how the setup works. All right, got this bolted on. Now sometimes these will pop right off. They shouldn't, but sometimes they do. So just want to take your time, go slow. Don't put an impact on it. Don't put air ratchet. Just nice and slow and easy. So I'm gonna go ahead and tighten that down, get the pulley off, and I'll show you what to do from there. All right, guys. So this Kelsey, is the dropping fucking pulley out. So you can see, kind of see how everything works in there. Um, there's a keyway guide here. So just make sure when you put it back on, once your keyway lines up, you can kind of see it sitting right there. Uh, there's the inside, the crank. As you can see, it's threaded. That's what I was kind of telling you about with how you pull it. You have four bolts, two, three, four. Uh, but before you pull that, make sure you clean this whole cover area so none of this nasty stuff gets in here. Uh, I put a rag here on the end, kind of pack it clean, um, that way nothing falls in there. Spray all this off, get it all cleaned up, uh, and I'll show you what to do after that. Once you do and you have it clean, uh, pour those full pull those four bolts, and you can kind of gently pry against the cover if it's sticky. Um, it should come off, but... You know, sometimes you got to pry a little bit, so we'll get to the next part. All right, guys. So now you can kind of see I cleaned everywhere around the pump just to get the majority of that off. So that way when we pull it, it doesn't drop any debris or sludge or nasty stuff. I mean, this is, we're getting into the cover here, so we really want to make sure that it's in good shape. I'm um, going to go ahead and pull these four bolts and get the pump out. Okay guys, so pumps out. Here's the cover. You wanna inspect it and make sure you don't have any deep grooves or gouges. Well, this one's got some miles on it and a little bit of wear. Um, I just wanna check the front, see what that looks like. Now we're not gonna be reusing any of these, so you, know, you just wanna see the wear pattern. There's no heavy scoring or gouging, but if we look here, I know it's kind of hard to tell being that it's on a camera, but we definitely have some wear. Um, all that little cross hatching and all that stuff's from debris, uh, just shitty oil, basically, excuse the language, uh, getting in there and, you know, wearing this pump out. I mean, these pumps aren't. These are, this is an original pump. 
Now I don't know if it's, you know, it's a Ford OEM one. I don't know if they've replaced it before, but not a good look. Uh, definitely has had, you know, people didn't take care of the oil or had dirty oil, debris in it. And that's kind of what that starts to look like. I'm just kind of giving you guys a rundown here. Sorry, I'm trying to do this one-handed here. Um, but we really want to look at, you know, the edges of these inside, kind of see what everything looks like. Make sure there's no heavy bluing um, on here or the cover from heat. But you can just tell this thing's had nasty oil in it. And, you know, unfortunately, that's just part of it. Um, you know, these aren't the best looking gears. Like I said, we're not reusing these at all, so I don't really care about how we treat them. Um, but if you look in here, this will kind of give you a little indication. Again, it's kind of hard to see, but if you can see the discoloration there, you know, that's from just heavy wear and heavy use over time. So, you know, the problem we are having with this truck is, you know, we deadheaded the high pressure pump hot and cold both 3800 psi uh put 150 psi shop air to each head um no oil loss re-ringed the injectors um you know tested the fuel system dropped the tank filters were clean pump puts out 55 60 psi uh 5500 wide open throttle 60 idle 60 all the way through so you know when you're chasing problems sometimes it just comes down to you know this truck would drive good uh cold once it got hot um you know and you demanded anything from it you know it would fall on its face especially at wide open throttle uh, if you eased into it it was fine so after looking at this and kind of seeing the wear you know you want tight tolerances on these and you don't want to see a lot of wear and you don't want to see a lot of damage you know you don't want to see cross hatching on these um you know you really want these to be super clean so when you see that kind of stuff you know, it just kind of tells you that dirt and debris has gotten in there. Um, you know, if you have a lifter go, what generally kills these trucks, uh, when you hear about the lifter problems is the lifters in here have needle bearings on the base that roll on the camshaft. And uh, from excessive use time, uh, excessive towing, you know, they just wear out. These are all just metal components. So those needle bearings will drop. The sump doesn't have a screen on it. So it'll pull those needle bearings up. This is true for basically 6073, 64s. Uh, that needle bearing will come up, get pulled in, you know, through that valley. It doesn't seem like it would, but it will. Um, work its way in. Once it gets in the pump, the pump grabs it because all this is is a mechanical you know, pump. And it gets into these gears and gets crushed, you know, as it rotates around. And it'll score the front cover, score the back cover basically eats everything up uh you know and then you get a this can't produce low pressure oil you know and low pressure oil is only about 75 psi at its max uh so it can't fill the reservoir on this or a 60 and that's when you get those you know no cranks you know you check everything um you know you can't get oil up into the reservoirs and you know that's from a needle bearing failure um so luckily we don't have that on this we just have some wear i mean this truck's got 280 on it you know it's not the worst um the cover's not beat up what we are going to put in it and i'll just show you um you can replace it with a ford factory pump if you want uh, i have but melling honestly makes the best kits uh, these are super cool they're a better design they're really, you don't really even replace them at this point. Uh, these are kind of, these pumps, I've never seen a melling fail. It doesn't mean they can't. But if you look at the ratios on these, you're talking 9 to 10 teeth. So this is a more volume pump. Um, you know, and you can see on there, this is brand new. You can see the factory hatching. You can see how clean this setup is versus... You know our old worn out setup here I'm trying to give you guys trying to give you as much information as i can um you know 
these trucks you kind of have to diag in person it's hard to to state but if you look at that and you see all those wear patterns and all those grooves you know you can just tell this pump's worn out it's had debris in it it holds pressure uh, but then you come over here and you look at this and you can see the two designs and how much more different they are i mean the volume you're going to be putting up with this pump versus this pump it's pretty much night and day um and like i said we'll clean this cover up get it really nice uh have it all cleaned up ready to go ready to reseal put the new pump on and take it out hopefully our 1211 issues solved um but basically the reverse process here um i'll go ahead and show you but it's really simple um you can use vaseline i'm not a huge fan of it um Yes, it will dissolve, but I like to use, where is it? Somewhere over here is some assembly lube. Um, I'll have to find it, it's on one of my carts, but I like to, here it is. So I like to use assembly lube. Um, it's really good. You wanna really slicken this thing up, um, pull the gears out, basically coat everything. These are not directional. The originals, if you buy a Ford, they are directional. You can look on it, and it will have uh, markings. This one says dampener, so you know where to face it, and so does the inner gear. So this has been probably replaced at some point. Uh, the original ones don't. They just have uh, index markings, and they're actually set for a certain way. This is a lot different. Uh, you can pull these gears out, flip them back, forth, whatever. It doesn't really matter. Uh, they don't have to be indexed or keyed a certain way. So if you pull them out, you know, to get everything set, you can just put them right back into. So, um, but yeah, you want to assembly lube those. This comes with a seal. It's right down in there. You want to put your seal on. Make sure when you, you know, clean this area thoroughly, don't get any debris in there. You want nothing on that surface. You want it nice and clean. Um, I don't really recommend putting anything on it um you can i guess but you don't want to score anything you don't want to damage anything these have to be perfect tolerances because of how they generate oil pressure so you really just want to clean it up um and then put your seal in you know make sure these are assembly lubed go ahead and pop those on you're gonna have two dowels these uh actually stayed on the block surprisingly um you want to line this up. So first put your gear set on, you know, get it all lubricated, put your gear set on. You're going to put the seal on, then you're going to pop this cover on, line it up with the dowels. It'll slide over. These will kind of shift, but you'll be fine. Don't worry about that too much. Um, make sure you clean up your keyway, make sure all that's ready to go. And then line up uh, on your harmonic balancer. You know, once you have those set, you know, find your torque standard for the low pressure oil pump cover. Uh, I'm not going to tell you what to do there. That's something you need to look up and, and do. Um, I'm not going to tell you torque settings. But, you know, you want to put that on. So put the gear set on, put the cover on with the seal. Line up your dowels. Make sure that's all set. Make sure the seal's set around. Take, take a mirror if you have to. Do whatever you got to do. Um, clean up your keyway. You can put some RTV on there if you want. Um, I'm not a fan of doing it. I like lining it up, making sure everything's straight and clean and nice. Uh, then go ahead and gently slide this on. Now, there's two methods to installing this. Um, and you can do a harmonic balancer install installer um, and put that on. Or, you know, I've seen guys get it fitted on enough and tamp it with a uh, dead blow. Again, I'm not a big fan of that. Um, I like everything to be installed properly, so I will be using a harmonic balancer install kit. Um, you know, line up your keyway, make sure this is lined up on the crank. There is a um, guide, you can see it right there. So just make sure it's on, make sure it's keyed correctly. Um, put your balancer kit on, very self explanatory. You basically put a rod in here, and the balancer kit. Um, we'll push in here and push that on 
get you to where you need to be set. Uh, make sure you torque the um, crank pulley bolt that we pulled out originally. And then it's just reassembly from there, guys. Uh, once everything's torqued to spec, you're ready to go. Put your belt back on. Um, you know, put your radiator back in. Put your fan and shroud in. Tighten everything up. And, uh, you know, fill back with fluids. Once you start this, check your oil after it runs. You know, give it a little drive out. Give it a little run out. Check your oil. Make sure everything's good. Uh, make sure your coolant's good. You know, but that's, that's pretty much it, you know. Um, if you got any questions, let us know. We're always happy to help. And uh, thanks for checking out our video.